Hey, Steph. So before we introduce you, let's just jump right in. Um, why do you think I asked you to do this video? Hi, hi Sam. <laughs> um, I guess, I know, like, I guess where students are right now, being in like third or fourth year, it's kind of a more important time to start thinking about kind of what you want to do after school and kind of where you want to be, maybe different work opportunities or like personal opportunities, like education and stuff. So I guess it's just kind of good to gain perspective from like other students and, and kind of see, um, I guess, what some other paths that people might have taken and how that could kind of relate to you and what you want to do with school and work in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so staff, you were a part of my, my first fourth year uh, group. So I'm very, very grateful uh, to have worked with you and your crew as well as uh, the entire fourth years uh, that year. Uh, it was nice getting to know you and now it's been a few years. Uh, so tell me a bit about like who you were um, during school, like what your major was, what maybe your interests were, how you filled your time, and then um, lead us up to how many years it's been and where you are at now. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, so I, I guess, graduated in 2019. So I guess like I'm almost two years ago now, which seems like a long time has passed in school for like when I think back on it but um yeah so when I was in school uh I was a part of the women's soccer team so that was kind of how I filled my time I guess so you played varsity sports <laughs> yes yeah I played on the varsity <laughs> women's soccer team um so that's kind of like where I balanced my school and and I guess personal time or like what I like to do in my free time per se um, but yeah, so at school, I guess I was very, I don't know, academically inclined in terms of wanting to uh, do well in school or was just always aware of like wanting to keep the door open for anything like post-graduation. So definitely was very invested in keeping on track with that. And uh, I guess the way I ended up doing accounting was pretty much just from coming in from first year like not really knowing what I wanted to major in not really knowing what my interests would be um and then just kind of taking like those introductory courses and stuff um kind of determining my interests I guess was both in like accounting and and I guess between accounting and finance and I guess I kind of ended up just going with accounting just based on like the pro like this, the courses that we did kind of liking that and then also like my co-ops um were like with accounting firm so I kind of ended up just picking my major through that and deciding that like I'm going to want to do the CPA route and 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 so forth. <laughs> yeah, so you, I say the word balance. Uh, you you expertly managed um, playing varsity soccer and being in, an accounting major in a different so a difficult major in a difficult program, and you ended up graduating with um, very very strong academic record and um, to give yourself some options. And so what did you do immediately upon graduation? Did you go and do the, the year long vacation? Did you, <laughs> did you um, I don't know, uh, sit, sit at home for, you know, 40, playing video games for 40 hours a day? Or um, yeah, what did you do? Where did you decide to use that investment that you made in yourself? Yeah, for sure. So um, I guess like, because wanting to do the CPA route, um, there's a lot of different like avenues I guess you can take in terms of like how you want to like get to that point or get to taking the CP and whatnot so um, kind of started to hear about it I guess in I want to say fourth year honestly like I don't think I heard about it beforehand but like there's um, kind of like more um, fast tracking programs that a lot of schools offer nowadays in the summer they're usually like called like GDIP or like graduate diploma in accounting like something like that but essentially the purpose of them is just to kind of fast track your like core modules and like your coursework so that you can just kind of focus on it for three months get those done and then um in the next year you can start at your capstones and, and take those so that you can take the c fee i guess a little earlier than you would be if you had to take the traditional route of like taking courses while you're working and then taking time off for busy season to to not be able to do coursework so um I know it was like sacrificing my summer a little bit, but I kind of decided that that would be the best um, decision for me, I guess, in the long run. I was just like, okay, I can just get it over with. Not yeah, no, it. 
That's a really good point that you made is like there's trade-offs. So uh, a number of, it's actually come up a lot during the Christmas break. Um, I received lots of emails, had lots of Skype chats about the different options, you know, the modules um, and even within like the PEP modules, doing the fast track through the modules, through the virtual modules. Um, and then doing the GDA programs and then doing the master's programs. So lots of different options. You chose to do the three month GDA, which gave you the equip um, through uni uh, uh, U of T, University of Toronto. And mm -hmm. you did it with, um, I feel like there was two or three, four, four of you in total, Dell grads, and you didn't all know each other um, going into there. Is that correct? Like yeah, you knew of each other, yeah. but you were, it wasn't like your core friend group all decided to go there, but then mm -hmm. you were there and, um, and you all, all made it through the, the competitive program and were able to get equivalency for your core one, core two, uh, and your tax and assurance. And then the following yep. May, you, um, the following May, you did capstone one and then capstone two in the summer and then wrote uh, the CP in September and congratulations this past uh, end of November this year, you found out that you were a successful writer. So Dal grad in, um, in May of 2019 and successful CP writer in November of 2020. So yeah, I'd say fast track and I'd say um, you know, based on your goals and objectives and your timeline that, you know, you made the best move that was right for you. And, and you know, it was the best move that was right for you because it's what you wanted to do. Um, and you understood the pros and cons, you know, you kind of use that CPA way thinking and yeah. And now you're here. Um, any, and I, how do I say this? Because I also know people that chose to, you know, start the modules not even right away. They took the summer and I've talked to them as well. And I plan on having them, you know, in a future, you know, call to balance things out because it really is like you do you. So did you have going into it? Was there a strong pull the other way? Or once you made your mind up, you were like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And I'm focused and like no regrets moving forward. What was your mindset like? Yeah, I guess like having, like I definitely started to look into it and, and get an idea of it, of like what it would look like and kind of what it meant. Um, and then I guess other, in terms of like other options of what I wanted to do would be like essentially if I wanted to take the summer off and like do kind of like the typical like traveling or like backpacking and like kind of like enjoy your summer before you start working. Um, so I guess just in terms of like what would be the best or like in the long term, like what I would kind of like would appreciate doing more is just kind of like all right like you're still in the school mindset like might as well just get it over with and do it you'll probably look back and be happy you did it and like it is it is only three months like at least the program I did so like I still was able to like enjoy like the month of August and like I did end up like traveling for a little during that month so like it's not a total like wash for the <laughs> for the summer but um yeah like once I kind of learned about it I was just kind of like all right this is going to be the best option for me and was it like how was it I, I and I know that like one of the rules is like you shouldn't ask questions that you don't know the answer to but this is just as much me catching up with you uh so I want to know how is it going from you know Dal accounting to U of T accounting um with the the professors there and like the students there were most of the students um U of T grads I think the class, like they have like their class profiles online a lot, so you can actually kind of like see where like different universities are from and stuff. But um, it would say like a pretty even split, honestly, like a little bit heavier on the UFT side, but like they have students from like a lot of different schools, like um, so like Dal, obviously, like they had like St. FX, like McMaster, Laurier, Queens, Western, some from like UBC, like so pretty, pretty good mix of like a lot of different like undergraduates and like people coming from different places either because they like were originally from Toronto or or just came to Toronto to do the program but yeah no, it was it was pretty good like I remember like like joining it I didn't really know like what it would be like in terms of like I don't know we all like took undergrads different places so I didn't know what the like their teaching style or like standard or like kind of like how it would be but it ended up being like completely fine like I think Dal like definitely like prepares you like well enough in terms of like accounting especially for like to be able to like move on and like have the tools you need to like continue and like be successful in that in that capacity. 
Cool. Yeah, I know um, a few of the profs with the U of T program, and they are they are leaders in their field um, as well. So I'm happy uh, that you felt well prepared. Um, and I've heard that from a few few other students that went on, and that's always rewarding because uh, we do put a lot of work in um, and survey the field, and you know are up up to date with kind of what the leaders of the country are doing, what the other leaders are doing, and what different programs are doing. And, um, we are invested in our in our tiger, so I'm really happy that that you felt like that empowerment. So we haven't even gotten to how do you use accounting in your current gig? Are you are you working in accounting? Are you like what's going on? Yeah, um, so I work at PwC um, in the risk assurance side. Um, so definitely like not like in the conventional like core assurance. I guess that people are more like like accustomed to or like known of. But I work in like uh, the controls testing side. So that's kind of what I what I do on a day to day basis. Day basis, cool. And what are your future plans um, or options that you're considering? Because you know, I think where you are right now, you've earned the right, and you continue to earn the right to leave many doors open. So, what are kind of the most attractive doors right now? Knowing that in a month or a year or two years, this could change, and that's okay because you earned that too. Yeah, I know. I think that's definitely a question that I'm starting to ask myself as well just with like having now like getting like the CP done and 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 getting closer to reaching like the month or like or the month requirements for the CPA so like I'm getting closer to being designated and like I know once that happens I kind of have to like sit down and figure out where I want to take that or what I want to do with that I, um definitely like enjoyed working with PwC and like have considered trying to maybe like within the company like trying to figure out if there's like other areas that kind of pique my interest um and definitely I think another one thing too I guess like career related but not so much like work focused is like I kind of like the idea of like having an opportunity to work somewhere else in the world like depending where that is and like what that looks like but I know like like through PwC they have like a lot of like secondment opportunities so kind of been interested in something like that but obviously with COVID I don't really know how near yeah. future that would kind of be a possibility but yeah so definitely like that. If we froze covid and we we're, we all of a sudden are in a land where covid wasn't there and you were you got a knock on your office door you're back in the office you got a knock on the office door and they said hey staff um we're gonna send you on secondment anywhere you want to go um for i don't know 18 months you get two plane ticket home, tickets home but you have to tell us in the next 30 seconds what is at the top what do you just like spit out randomly yeah, I think like probably like somewhere in Europe, so probably London or something, like just kind of from top of mind, like would be like a cool place to go. Different. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, and London's a good one because it's oh um similar but not similar clients to probably what you see in Toronto. But also then you're in a hub where there is a lot of other industries and a lot of other just cool travel opportunities, cool like non-work things to do as well. So yeah, exactly. Cheaper to travel over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably think it's even like cheaper to probably travel um via like plane than it is a lot of times to take the train, if I recall. Like just yeah, I think so. Like, why is like this flight $77 and this train is $120? And like, yeah, no, exactly. Wow. Yeah, neat, 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 neat. Oh, <clears throat> that's really, really cool. So what advice if you're sitting here because you are, you're sitting here talking to third and fourth year uh current Dow accounting majors or possibly somebody in their third year that's doing a little finance, doing a little bit of counting. Um, what is your advice to this, these current Dal accounting or accounting undecided majors? Okay. Um, oh gosh. Uh, I don't, like, I guess just like, like keep an open mind to things and like, just kind of like figure out what you like doing and like what you could see yourself doing. And I guess like, I guess regardless of what you major in and things like I don't think it's gonna like dictate what you're able to do in the future. So like do what you like and what maybe piques your interest. But I guess like within business in general, like I don't think anything's like a closed door depending on like what, what you choose. So I guess just kind of, you know, start looking a little forward into potential like work places, like where you wanna work, what you wanna work, like industries you wanna work in and, and maybe like what other like professional designations or things you maybe want to like obtain in the future just to kind of you know get in mind of like what what's actually out there and like what where that can take you 
Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think that's, that's excellent. Uh, something that I'm going to bring up now that uh, just kind of came to mind, and I hope you don't mind too much. Um, I'm hearing this and I'm almost wondering if I was listening to this, not knowing you, did this come easy to you? Did you, did sports come easy to you? Did excelling in school come easy to you? Um, because I can say where, where I was, you looked like a workhorse. Like you just look like you put in the time and you, you manage it well, but you, there's no substitute for hard work. When I say that, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, like, I guess I've just always been very, like, uh, like, kind of like a type A person, I guess, in terms of just, like, really wanting to, uh, like, self, I don't know, like, very much like a self-competitor, I guess, so, like, always wanting to, like, do the best I can on things and, like, putting in a lot of time, I guess, like, through university, I feel like most things is, is not necessarily about how smart you are, per se, but just, like, kind of how much you kind of want to put the time in or, like, care about doing well and, and like, whatever facet that is, um, and I guess, like, with soccer, like you're just kind of used to like the time management of it so like we we're pretty busy with like our schedule like more so in the fall than in like in the winter per se but like you just kind of have to find find the balance of like you don't have a lot of time so it's kind of almost easier to delegate your time <laughs> <That's fair. laughs> like, there's no time, time to pause the question <laughs> yeah like more free time's not necessarily like <laughs> great like I like to be lazy and like sit around in my bed all day and watch Netflix too but, <laughs> I guess um, doing but so, so it was all sports all studying no fun whatsoever right yeah no like no like it definitely did go out like quite a bit like I guess like in terms of like normal university student but um I don't know like yeah just balance balance yeah or um balance and or maybe a little bit of focused intensity like just having your goals and working towards your goals and you you worked incredibly incredibly hard and I like what you said that it doesn't come down to natural intelligence in fact I really you know can't obviously tell a lot of times if somebody's like you know gifted or not gifted I don't know like and it's yeah. not my place I'm there to you know, if somebody has a question, cool, let's work through it. And, but I can see like the people that come to class day in, day out, you know, they have their books there, they're there to work. And you were definitely somebody that showed up day in, day out, and you were there to work. And that's, it's incredibly cool to kind of see you, um, see you here. And I'm really grateful that you're sharing this advice of, you know, just like hard work pays off to these current people. So they see like a year and a half, like they could be looking at you right now. And two years later, be in your shoes, right? if that's what they want, if that's kind of their path. And I think a two year investment of time is something that most people can be like, oh, okay, I can do that. 12 years, 20 years, you know, we start kind of getting up and up and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be the executive of PepsiCo at 55. Like I'm, I can't see the linear path, but if they're like, oh, okay, put my head down, you know, check out the opportunities, work hard, be kind, have friends, like, you know, it's, it's worth it. Okay. So coming in the last like few points, uh, Steph, how would you define success? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's a hard one too. Um, like I guess in the, I guess it was easier to define success kind of through school and like just after school because it's very like focused on like there's not much other going on in terms of like just like academics, like school and like and that's and that stuff so like I guess in the short term my definition of success was just very much like doing well keeping doors open and like uh, the CPA like that was pretty much like my short term like pass the CP like get your CPA and then you can figure it out um, but now that that's kind of like coming to an end a little bit or like kind of in the midst of that like kind of trying to figure out now like what my new definition of success would be but I guess for me it's just always kind of like I do like learning and I like like the process of learning I don't necessarily like exams and test taking but I do like learning accounting and like broadening that but um I don't know I guess just like always being open to opportunities and kind of like doing excelling in like what you do and, and what you like know you can do well so I guess I'm trying to figure out still like what my motivators are in terms of like a work setting like whether that's money or like personal life um enjoying what I do like I'm not fully 
sure yet what my motivators are, but um, definitely just kind of always wanting to, you know, grasp every opportunity that like comes comes your way. I think that's a fantastic answer. A, because it's real. Um, but B, you've accomplished so much and, um, you know, you've had definitions and you also know that they evolve and they change. And you also know, and you're open that you don't always need to have one, but now you're, you know, you're open, you're like, cool. Um, I have a skill set. I'm going to continue to grow my skill set and I'm going to have a mix of, you know, an amazing attitude, uh, good hard work ethic, the base that you've built and earned for yourself and then see what's out there. And I think that that's a perfect way to be, because if you're just focused on one area, that's it's not bad. If that's, you know, if you know what you want to do and you want to go for it, cool. Other things may come up. And if you're really focused, you may not get to see those. And so then it comes down to somebody's definition of success. If that's what they know, what they want, they don't mind missing out on all those things. But for you, you're like, well, I've done this hard work. I've invested myself and I want to see what's out there. And I don't want to limit myself. I don't want to limit myself to a UK opportunity, um, you know, something out out east, out west, you know, um, like, you don't know. And I think that that's, that's absolutely perfect. And I think we need to hear that a lot more is that, I don't know. And that's, that's a cool thing, right? I wouldn't be a doll if I was, you know, like, hey, I'm cool with where I am, but, you know, I'm also open to things that might come up if they're the right things. And how do you know yeah. they're the right things? Well, when they come up, you're excited, you're a little bit nervous, and you're like, this might be cool. And what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, no, for sure. Do you have any final comments uh, for these third and fourth years? Uh, anything that you want to say? Anything? Um, just anything at all yeah um I guess just like if you're in fourth year then it's unfortunate that the way kind of school's been this year like being online and stuff but yeah just definitely like kind of enjoy what you can like the last few months before you graduate because like it's kind of like the last time I guess if people are we're like living out in Halifax it's going to be the last time you're out there for a little bit so definitely take advantage of being out there and kind of enjoy it and I guess like in it was a full scope and thing like if you are like serious in doing your CPA and you want to do it like I would definitely like heavily like recommend like looking into some of those different like opportunities or like ways to get your CPA or get to like the CP um because there's definitely a lot of different options you can take and and I know like there are some people that like I I knew that were kind of on the fence with me about doing it and they decided they didn't want to and later on they may be like in the in the core work right now being like I kind of wish I'd done that just to like get it over with so I would definitely recommend like seriously looking into it and kind of determining, I guess, quickly, unfortunately, if that's something that you kind of want to do, because it, I have no regrets about taking that. It was definitely like the best decision that I made in terms of like getting that done and out of the way. Nice. Yeah, it wasn't easy, but it's worth it and no regrets. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you, Steph. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs>